In this section, we're going to give an overview of the Python data environment using third-party libraries. The first library I'm going to talk about is NumPy. And NumPy is the essential library for working with data. It contains prominently a more advanced version of the Python list, which is a true array. And this allows data to be stored and accessed more easily than the Python list. And in some cases, it works a lot faster. It also contains many convenience functions, and other libraries use NumPy as their underpinnings. Finally, it introduces the concept of broadcast or vectorized operations. So with that, we'll jump right into our notebook. Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do is to import NumPy, and the convention is to import it as MP. I'll run that cell. And then we'll go ahead and start making some arrays. And I'll unimaginatively name our first array just R1D for one dimensional. I call the MP array. And then inside, I have to actually make it look like a list. And just to get an idea of what that does, we'll call it. So there's our first array. Okay, we'll compare this to a two-dimensional array. And inside we have to structure it as two lists. And again, we'll call it. Okay, so so far it looks a little bit like a list. Um, it's not readily apparent which uh, features or what advances over a list we have yet, but we'll continue on. One of the things you're often wanting to do is to find out the dimensions of your array. And we do that with the numpy and dim function. And we pass it the array name. And we're going to get the dimensions for both of our arrays. And so we can see this tells us how deep the array is. So the first one is just has one level. The second one has two. All right, so essentially the second one is a, a matrix or a, a little table, although it doesn't behave exactly like a table. Okay, the next thing we will do is maybe want to see the size of the arrays. I went ahead and pre-wrote this code. We'll just run it. And the size tells us how many elements each array contains. All right, so these initial steps can be important when you're past data and you're not sure what it looks like other than the fact that it's a NumPy array. All right, and then finally, we may want to look at the shape. And the shape tells us along each dimension how much data there is. So the first one, there's just one dimension, so it's three elements. And the second one, we have two rows, essentially, of three elements. Okay, we can also generate data sequentially a couple of different ways. So I'll show you those. Okay, so I can use the built-in standard library range function or NumPy has its own built-in function, NumPy array. All right, so these will do the same thing. All right, we can probably argue that the second way will be faster. It wouldn't be obvious in a small array like we're building, but with larger arrays, the arrange function should be faster because NumPy itself is based on some optimized code. And then we'll just take a look at those. So there's our first one, and there's our second one, so identical. Okay, often enough, you need to know what kind of data is getting stored in the array. And so we can do that using the data type. And we see that when I just call a range, or even if I call range, it'll be the same, I have an integer. Okay, and for some situations, you may want to change the data type. So this is called recasting data. 
And I'm going to have to reassign the whole array to recast the data. So I will call numpy array again, and I will call in the arrange, and then I will set the data type. And in this case, I'll do a float 64. Okay, and just to see what that does. Okay, and just to see what that does, we'll call it again, and we can see that it adds the decimal place to all of the data points, and the data is, in fact, changed. Okay, the next thing we can do is to set a variable. And we can actually display it with different dimensions using reshape. Okay, so this works on existing data if you need to reshape it, or in this case, I'm making a new array and I'm going to have three rows with five data points each. And just to get an idea of what that looks like, I'll call it. And then you may want to, in fact, transpose it later, even if this is the original way you get the data. Sometimes you want to turn it. So you can do it two different ways. There's a transpose function, and there's a shortcut to that. It's just a capital T. You can see it essentially turns the array 90 degrees. All right, and it's important to note that the original array remains unchanged. Okay, so if you want the transposition to stick, you're going to have to assign uh, the variable or a new variable maybe to this transposed version of the array. Okay, often enough you want to change values inside an array, and to do that, we index it. So just to get an idea of what this indexing is doing, if I call 0, 0, I get the first value. If I call 0, 1, I get the second value. Okay, and if I want sort of the second row, the second value, I get it like that. Okay, so to assign a value, all I do is find the index position I want, and I change the value. Okay, and you can see that the value has now been changed to 60. So we saw how to index a single value. Let's see how to index an entire row or column. We do that just by calling one of the axes. Okay, so zero, the zero axes by default are the rows. And if I want a column, I call it like that. Okay, there's also sort of a shortcut for indexing every nth value that you're interested in. And I do that with a double colon, and then I tell it how, uh, what the frequency is of the values that I want to index. Okay, so we're starting at the third index position. So I'll go up here just so you can see. Zero, one, two, three. And then after that, it's every third element. Okay, so effectively, we're getting the third element in every row here. All right, so a pretty powerful shortcut if you have a large array and you want to get, say, if it's monthly data, every 12th value out of there or some other uh, value out of there, maybe quarterly, maybe biannually, something like that.